Can we use plastic in aquaponics? This is what we're going to see together in this video. So I received a few questions about what type of material can I use for my aquaponic system and I already made a video about this but there is a specific point is can we use plastic in aquaponics and especially for the pipes. You know the pipes that is going from the water pump to the grow bed. Uh, this is a very specific pipe that is often in type of plastic, plastic, vinyl, uh, whatever, you know, there are different types of plastic. So the question is what type of plastic should we use? Can we use them? And same question for the PVC, you know, if you have seen uh, some NFT system, nutrient film technique, uh, the food is often grown in PVC pipes. So are they good for aquaponics? That's basically the question. The question that I receive and to be very, very honest with you, uh, I, am in, I am in a little bit in trouble when I receive those type of questions because, uh, yeah, I, I haven't seen any real data about it. So I use plastics, I mean I use pipes, I try to limit uh, the quantity of plastics that I have in my aquaponic systems, but yes, I have pipes that are going from the water pump to the grow bed. So for those type of pipes, I use some vinyl uh, pipe which is this type of fins so uh, this one is really uh, a clear vinyl tubing and they say that uh, it's uh, resistant to corrosion and abrasion so it's important to have some materials that are resistant and that are not going to break down with time uh, but uh, what is also important is to make sure that they don't release too many fins in the water uh, so normally those type of equipment they are designed for aquariums or ponds. So we imagine that if they are designed for an aquarium they don't release anything that is toxic otherwise it would maybe kill the fish. But what we don't know is what is the limit, what is the quantity of elements that they are releasing into the water and at one point does it become uh, dangerous for us because you know sometimes you can accumulate some particles until a certain point. So I am completely unable to respond to this question. I am very honest in this video uh, but I'm going to ask you if you have any expertise in this field. Uh, nowadays the community is 10,000 people who are subscribed to this channel which means that there are probably 10 times more people who are really watching my videos. So if you have any expertise with plastic, uh, especially in contact with water that we're going to drink or where we're going to grow some food, uh, please leave a comment into the video and share your expertise because here we are all the same. We are all playing with tubes but we don't know what is the real impact in the long term. So obviously a lot of people are using it around the world and uh, it's working, right? For aquariums, in aquaculture, we use also a lot of pipes, we use PVC and uh, it doesn't really, I mean, we don't see any real effects on the fish and on the consumer, but I haven't seen any real serious study on this specific point. So what I'm gonna give you today is not really what type of equipment you can use. Obviously, for me, I use most of the time equipment that is designed for aquariums and ponds. And PVC, I try to limit because I know that it's not the best. Uh, but when I use PVC, I limit it. So uh, here, for example, in my setup, I design my bell saphon thanks to some PVC pipe. And if I design an NFT system, I'm going to use some PVC. Yes, that's right. I'm going to use some PVC, but uh, I'm going to try to limit the area where they are exposed directly to the, to the direct sunlight. So you know that the sunlight, when it goes into the, the plastic and on a lot of materials, the UV, they can affect the, the material. Also, the difference of temperature between cold temperature and high temperature, when you got those difference, uh, the, the material is gonna uh, dilate and contract. So that's where you can have uh, also some uh, particles that are released into the, into the water. So if you can uh, try to limit the, the area where the sun 
sun is completely directly, I mean, when you're going to have a direct sun exposition, but also when you can try to cover the pipes, if possible. It's not always possible, but when you can try to limit, basically, the quantity of PVC that is exposed to the sun. That's really the best advice I can give you. Then, uh, in terms of um, glue, because when you work with PVC, most of the time you have to use some glue. So the glue that you're going to use, it's not the best because I don't know if you have worked with PVC before, but when you open the tube, you can really smell uh, a kind of uh, very, very chemical um, odor. So you want to limit the quantity of glue that you use, but obviously you need to use glue. So when you use glue, just let it dry, let it ventilate for 24 hours before putting the system in water or before adding the parts into the system. You want to have, you want to make sure basically that the glue is completely dry before adding the glue into the system. Uh, it's going to avoid all the particles to be released into the water and basically your water to be toxic. The last point that I want to add is if you design some specific system, especially if you have some tank with some glass and if you want to expose the fish, so if you want to basically add glass into the system, you may want to use silicone, silicone or other type of equipment, material. So in this case, what I recommend is to use silicone that is adapted for aquarium. So the aquarium uh, products, obviously, they, they are designed to limit the quantity of toxic uh, materials that are released into the water. Uh, because obviously you're going to keep fish alive uh, or you can also use equipment that is designed for food grade if you find any. Uh, but for the silicone, I know that uh, the, the, the one that I use generally is the one that is adapted for aquarium. So it's most of the time when I do indoor aquaponic systems when we want to see the fish. In this case, if I really have to use silicone, I limit at the maximum because I know it's probably not the best thing to use. But if I really have to use it, I will use silicone that is adapted to aquariums. Because once it's dry, it's not supposed to release anything into the water. So that's the best advice I can give you. And I'm sorry, I'm really not an expert of all those chemicals. I know that in aquaculture we use them uh, without any specific caution because you know it's diluted into the water. Even in recycled systems that are very close to aquaponics where we recycle uh, the water a lot. Uh, but I know as well that if we can limit it, it's better. And if you have any specific advice, if you're an expert in plastic, please uh, give your comment below the video and let me know, even if you're not an expert, what type of plastic are you using? I'm sure a lot of you are using PVC, uh, vinyl, such as, the plast uh, such as the pipe I just showed before, you know, the pipe that you put uh, on your water pump. And also, we use this pipe also connected to the air pump most of the time. So, let me know what you are using. It's very important. It's quite a sensitive topic. I know that a uh, lot of people uh, are scared to work with, uh, with plastic in aquaponics and I am the first one in this case, that's why I limit the quantity. But please share, we, we need to talk about this topic, like we don't want to hide it, we want to just limit the quantity that we use and try, if there is one material that is the best, let's, let's be all aware of it and let's use it. So please put your comment in below the video. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe because I release one video every week. And in those videos, I try to share my best advice, my best tips. And even today, it's one of those videos where uh, I have a lack of knowledge uh, about the specific toxicity of the plastics that are used uh, in all our setups. So I'm not scared to tell you. I share when I have some, uh, some knowledge, I share it. But when I don't know something, I tell it as well. Uh, and in this video, the, the aim is to really use the community to uh, find the best option. So uh, if you subscribe to the channel, you're going to receive one video every week. Uh, a good tip most of the time. I hope you enjoy the video. And if you, if you enjoy the video, please give it a like. Also, uh, if you are new to the channel, you know that I give you a free aquaponics training. It's in the description of the video just below. Uh, a free six-step process to basically go uh, through 
some very, very basic but very important knowledge to have when you design your aquaponics and you, when you manage your aquaponics system in the long term. I'm talking about the limits of aquaponics, how many fish can you keep, uh, the ratio between the fish tank and the grow bed, all those type of things that are very basic. But if you don't get them right, you can be sure that you're going to fail in aquaponics. So they are crucial information and it's completely free. You get it from the description of this video, you're going to find a link or in the eye like information in the corner of the video somewhere. Uh, you click on it and it's going to guide you to this, uh, to this free training where I really try to help you as much as I can. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video once again and see you in the next one. Bye bye. Don't forget to get your free gift from this screen. You can also leave me a comment below the video, subscribe to the channel and see my last video. I really hope to see you soon and I wish you a fantastic success with aquaponics. Have a good crop!